Hello my dear friends, I am your friend Dr. Gaurav and in this video we are going to talk about different areas of brain. Each and every area of brain is responsible for its own specific function. If there is injury in a particular area of brain, that injury is going to result in the decrease in the function of that particular region. So my dear friends, let us talk about different areas of brain and when we talk about different areas of brain, we talk in terms of broad man's areas. So broad man's areas are the nomenclature given to different areas of brain. Let us see, let us draw a representative diagram of cerebrum. So my dear friends, this is a representative diagram of cerebrum. You can see over here, this is your lateral sulcus. So this is your lateral sulcus. If you do remember, here is your central sulcus. So this is your central sulcus. My dear friends, you need to remember that in front of the central sulcus, the lobe is known as frontal lobe. The lobe is known as frontal lobe. And behind the central sulcus, the lobe is known as parietal lobe. The lobe is known as parietal lobe. If you do remember, just below this lateral sulcus, the lobe is known as temporal lobe. Temporal lobe. And behind this parietal lobe and temporal lobe, there is occipital lobe. So this is your occipital lobe. So these are important lobes of the brain of the cerebrum and these lobes are having different functions. So frontal lobe is mainly having functions for motor movements in the body. It is also having very important component in your personality. It helps you to think, it helps you to concentrate, it also helps you to control the bowel and bladder. It also helps you to control the eye movements in the horizontal direction. If you talk about temporal lobe, temporal lobe, it helps in your auditory function, it helps in your smell, it also helps in your memory to convert your short term memory to long term memory. It also helps in your behavior, your emotional component, your sexual behavior, etc. And my dear friends, when we talk about parietal lobe, parietal lobe is very important in the learning process. So lots of association areas are there in parietal lobe. When we learn something, we retain something, we understand something. So this is very important area when we talk about learning process. And it is also having very important areas for sensory perceptions in the body. So parietal lobe is very important for sensory perceptions as well as learning. And when we talk about occipital lobe, occipital lobe lies behind the parietal lobe and temporal lobe in the posterior region of the brain and this is responsible for vision. So this is very very important lobe again occipital lobe. And my dear friends, now we are going to talk about different broadman's areas. When we talk about broadman's areas, so we need to remember that broadman's areas is very important to understand. Anterior to the central sulcus, there is a gyrus and this is your precentral gyrus. So this gyrus is your precentral gyrus, precentral gyrus and this gyrus is having area number four. So this is area number four and this area number four in precentral gyrus is nothing but your primary motor area, primary motor area. So this area is very important in front of central sulcus so this is your central sulcus and anterior to central sulcus on precentral gyrus there is primary motor area and anterior to this primary motor area there is my dear friends this is secondary motor area area number 6 so this is area number 6 secondary motor area so this is secondary motor area so this area number 6 is secondary motor area and in this secondary motor area there is premotor cortex and supplementary motor cortex. 
so if we see here below is your premotor cortex and above is your supplementary motor cortex so this is secondary motor area both are together area number 6 and anterior to this secondary motor area there is another area over here and this is area number 8 this area number 8 is also known as frontal eye field area this is also known as frontal eye field area so this is also very very important area to control the horizontal movement of eyes and the horizontal vision my dear friends in the frontal lobe itself there is another area below these motor areas and that is area number 44 and area number 45 this area number 44 and area number 45 is also known as Broca's area. Broca's area. What is this area important for? This area is very very important for motor component of speech. Motor component of speech. That is in the formation of language. Motor component of speech is developed in this Broca's area. So when we talk about sensory areas, we need to remember in the parietal lobe, just behind the central sulcus, there is a gyrus and this gyrus is known as post-central gyrus, post-central gyrus. So this post-central gyrus is also very important because this is having the major portion of somatic sensation what is somatic sensation somatic sensation is the general sensation mostly coming from the skin areas or the epidermal areas so these are having somatic sensation so this cortex is somato sensory cortex somato sensory cortex so my dear friends this somato sensory cortex is area number 312 so area number 312 is in the parietal lobe and is on the post central gyrus and this is your somatosensory cortex. So you need to remember this, this is very important. And my dear friends, when we talk about temporal lobe, so my dear friends, in this temporal lobe, this very very important area and that you need to remember over here is area number 41 and area number 42 so this area number 41 and 42 in temporal lobe is your auditory cortex is your auditory area auditory cortex or auditory area so this area is responsible for reception of sound and when some sound is being perceived the speech is being understood so this understanding of that sound is in this area number 22 and this area number 22 is very famous and very important to understand speech and this area is also known as Wernicke's area, Wernicke's area. So this Wernicke's area is very important to understand speech. So this Wernicke's area is for sensory component of speech or for comprehension of speech, comprehension of speech. So this is very, very important. When we talk about Wernicke's area for sensory or comprehension of speech and we talk about Broca's area for motor component of speech you must remember there is a very important connection in between these two areas and this two area is being connected by a very important arc of neurons and this is your arcuate fasciculus so once the Wernicke's area is stimulated through this connection that message is being sent to the Broca's area and the Broca's area helps in the reply of that particular message. So my dear friends, you need to remember that this connection between Wernicke's area and Broca's area is known as arcuate 
fasciculus. And also my dear friends, the most important area in the brain that is for your vision, that is area number 17, 18 and 19. So, area number 17, 18, 19 is in the visual cortex. So, this area number 17 is your primary visual cortex, is your primary visual cortex or your primary visual area. So, this is very, very important. This is also important for central vision, the central retina. So, central retina directly takes its message to area number 17 that is primary visual cortex area number 18 and area number 19 helps as an association area to understand what is being seen in the area number 17. So, these are different areas of brain and these areas are rapidly asked in your exams and you need to remember them, you need to memorize them. Whenever there is any lesion in any particular area, according to the function of that particular area, deficit will be observed in that patient. So, my dear friends, as a doctor, you must remember these areas. You cannot afford to forget any of them. Best of luck. Goodbye.